hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel and happy new year so today we'll be looking at fully funded bsc masters and phd opportunities at york university in canada as you can see you can get a scholarship of a hundred and eighty thousand canadian dollars or 120 canadian dollars covering your entire fees and with remnant for your living um, stipend for your living allowance to cover rent and the other cost so this is what we'll be looking at today fully funded bsc this ones you actually see here bsc scholarships then we'll also look at scholarships for masters and phd both for international and domestic students so sit back bring out your pen and paper as i talk you through the entire process so once again welcome to my youtube channel it is victor once again it's another day and we have another scholarship if you're joining us for the first time you're welcome but where have you been there are hundreds of videos already on this channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world so look around i'm sure you find something that catches your interest and if you're a returning viewer returning subscriber thanks for coming back thanks for the constant support happy new year and i hope you find the scholarship this year sooner than later so let's go straight into the business of today we are at york university canada remember there is york university or university of york in the uk today we are at york canada so in case you're typing this on google remember to add canada unless it might take you to the uk university instead of the canadian university so let's begin with the very obvious one and it's about um what do they call it it's about um english proficiency your english proficiency because a number of universities might want you to write some of these english exams so i've used the search bar to type out english proficiency to see whether you need to submit an english test or not so fortunately for a number of these um courses you get your english um your english requirement your english test requirement waived if you're from one of these eligible countries so i can see nigeria there already so if you're just from one, if you're from one of these countries you can just claim that your course was already studied in english so you wouldn't need to provide an english language test so that's a good thing and we have that sorted already so if your course is already taught in the english language that's your undergraduate degree or if you be applying for the bsc the bachelor's degree you can see your secondary school was done entirely in english so you do not you do not need to submit the english language test so that is out of the way i hope that's clear good out of the way so let's go to the scholarships themselves so this is a scholarship page for actually undergrad for undergrad students or those undergrad applicants those applying for ba bsc programs and straight away i'm going to international applicants to see the different funding opportunities for international applicants and if you check this very closely you will see no award application required so it means if you're applying for some of these scholarships and award you did not you do not need a separate application process all you need to do is to apply for a course i'll show you how to do that shortly just apply for a course submit all your documents and if they think your application is strong enough they award you one of these awards or one of these scholarships so no award application required but some others may require a different application so as you can see this one here the glendon international excellence scholarship no award application required so it means when you just apply for admissions and if you think your admission is strong enough they award you part of this or all of this scholarship hope that is clear so check for the different awards remember you're not applying for them differently they will just consider you if you're eligible for it and some of them they have the requirements those they actually um, give these awards so let's scroll down a little if you scroll down then you find awards that you have to apply for differently so it means you apply for the course you're interested in and then return to apply for these awards and you can see the deadline it opened 2nd of December, it's closing the 15th of February, so not so far away. 
So just scroll down a little and see the different awards. This is how to apply. So you've applied for a course, then you go here and apply for one of these scholarships. You can click on the apply button and see where it takes us to. So what it means is that if you click, I have not applied yet. So it takes you to a tab where you have to apply for one of the courses. Well, let's refresh this page. If you said you've applied, then you choose the program you've applied for. That makes sense. Then you have to log in with your number and then your date of birth. So let's return. Let's return here. So these are the different scholarships I showed you earlier, these ones. So these ones, you apply for them separately. You can see here that you can win over or exactly 180,000 Canadian dollars in scholarship, the Presidential International Scholarship of Excellence. So this is wonderful. There are several other ones here. So it means you can apply, I think you can apply for all of them here because they have different application processes. And at the end of the day, you might choose the one. If you get all of them, you choose, I think I choose only one or two of them that you would accept and I'll cover your studies and um, give you some money in your pocket as well to cover your living expenses. So how do you apply? Remember, you have to apply differently for these ones we mentioned just now. So how do you apply for a course? It's very simple. Go to the different courses, undergraduate courses. So look for the course that you're interested in. There are several courses here. Look for the course you're interested in and check the application requirements. And I should just say this quickly. A number of these universities for undergrads might ask you for an A-level. Some um, universities around the world do an A-level, some do not do, and that's the problem. You have to take an A-level exam or SAT, or the, the, that's the US equivalent, I think they call it SAT, for you to qualify for this. So that's just what I noticed when I looked at some of the applications requirements of these BSc courses. So that's it for BSc. You apply for this and then you return to this scholarship page and then return to this scholarship page. Let's scroll down and apply for these ones, this presidential scholarship and the rest, because you need a student number on an application number from your course application to get access to these forms to apply for these scholarships. So let's go to um, the master's and PhD. So this is master's and the website or the web page for masters and phd fellowships so here you see masters international no ta it means you are an international student but you do not have a teaching assistantships most universities in northern america sponsor students through teaching assistantships so try to get one i'll show you how to apply to get one so if you apply and you get in but there's no TA or teaching assistantship. This is what your funding package would look like. So you get the fellowship, you get health cover and the rest of them. You get a little bit over 21 Canadian dollars, 21,000 Canadian dollars. But then check for the fees. You have to subtract the fees from this 21,000 and the fees already over 20,000. So it means you wouldn't have any money remaining for living expenses. And that is why I said that TA, teaching assistantship, is important because that is what would give you extra cash in your pocket to cover living expenses. So let us now check what you will get if you have a TA. So Master's International TA, let's see. And now you see the difference. So these are all the kinds of money you get, including the teaching assistantship. And then you get... Um, close to 40,000 Canadian dollars, 40,000. And then from this 40,000, you would subtract this amount. It's close to 20,000, 19,479. So at the end of the day, you have over 20,000 in your pocket for living expenses, for rent and other related costs. So it means you want to try to get a TA Masters with a TA for international students. And the same applies to a PhD, of course. So you can go to PhD and there's PhD TA. There's no PhD without TA. So that's good. 
look at the PhD from first year to second year, you get 39 and then you subtract the expense, you still get like 20 something thousand as well. And the same thing here as well, from third to fifth year, you also get, subtract this from this, you also get some things in your pocket. And there are also other pockets of funding in the university, like other fellowships, small grants here and there, that would also help with your living cost and other expenses. So how do you apply? So let's see, let's look for courses for um, PhD and Masters. We've looked at undergrad courses, so PhD and Masters. Let's go there. So scroll down, you see your different courses. And let's use biology, for example. You want to apply for biology, this is the step. And mind you, the steps might be different for different courses, so check your own course. But we're using biology for an example now. So we scroll down biology, biology, and then we go to, let's see, additional admissions requirements. Let's see. So it just says three recommendation letters and statements of interest, CV. Okay. What might be, let's see, let's, okay, more information coming up. I was even suggesting we should go to the program page. The program page means the dedicated page for the biological department. So this is the dedicated page. We'll be coming to it here soon. But let's look at the applications requirements together. So you can see the deadline here. Things about um, English language requirements. But remember, we have a waiver because we studied in the English-speaking country. So the deadline as well stated here. Let's scroll down. The recommendation letter, statement of interest, CV. So this is like very general applications document. But if you go to the departmental page, you might get more information. So this is the departmental page. And these are the faculty members. I will tell you very soon why this is necessary. Why you need to know those. In the department so let's see important academic dates department of biology good so let's go to the BSc by research so here you get information about the courses what you will learn the duration of the course and things like that you need to read this up because you would have to put some of this info in that statement of interest. Not word for word, of course, in your own words that, oh, if I come to this department, I'll be doing these courses, I'll be equipped with these skills, I'll be able to work with social professors. So you need information from this website, summarized in your own words, when you're writing your application documents. So now let's go to how to apply. So for this department, your first step, so I'm reading what is written here. Your first step is to contact professors you would like to work with and explain why you're interested in their research program and what skills and passion you can bring to their lab. So this is very important. For this particular department, you need to get a yes from a supervisor. So those professors we saw earlier, you need to contact them at least one of them, check where they are working, their area of interest, and look for the one that works in an area of interest or an area that you are most interested in. For instance, if you're into animal biology, then you look for a professor working in that area and send the professor an email. There's already a video on this channel on how to send emails to professors, so I'll link the video in the description box so you can like check, out, uh, check it out quickly. The idea is introduce yourself say the subject of the email um, um, graduate student master student or, or prospective masters prospective phd student searching for a supervisor in animal biology or something then with your title dear professor abc my name is a xyz a graduate um, of biology from opq university 
my research areas are in you know um SWI, you know, you understand what I mean? So your research areas and then tell them that you are intending to apply to this university and you wish them to be your um, supervisor because their area of research aligns with your area of interest and mention the particular research they're doing, check their profile, check their website and see their latest research and mention it in that letter and show how you've done something related either as part of your research or as part of your job um as part of your job as well to show connection between what you intend to study and what they are ready to so that's the that's the general that's the general thing so check for other departments as well they might have their own procedures their own ways of applying and usually i tell students if you contact the professor wait for like two weeks if they do not respond, contact the secretary of the department or the head of the department. They might guide you on how to actually contact these professors. So if they do not respond, go through the contact person in the department. Tell them about how you're trying to get hold of one of these professors. They might just help you at the end of the day. So one more thing, let's address the elephant in the room. For most Canadian universities, you have to pay application fees. And I think it's only the MasterCard scholarship that prevents or that helps you to pay. But for other universities, for other scholarships, you have to pay your own application fee. And unfortunately, there are no waivers for most countries. Here you can see the application fee for biology department. It's 140 Canadian dollars. This is not US dollars, Canadian dollars, so it's lower. Well, even with that, I know it can be a substantial amount of money for some people coming from um, developing countries. But that's, unfortunately, that's the, that's the reality we live in. So 140 Canadian dollars for this particular department. So check for yours. You can save towards it. You can borrow for it. Especially if you get a yes from a professor. I think if you get a yes, you can rally around, do a GoFundMe, contact me or something, and they will run around and look for how to find you and um, how to raise this application fee. So just first of all, prioritize contacting a professor and getting a yes from them. So that's it, guys. I hope this was useful. Fully funded scholarships in Canada at York University both for undergraduate studies as you can see here $180,000 that's a lot of money or oh, we even saw for masters and PhD as well so check for your own department we looked at biology so check for your own department and see the application requirements as usual guys we cannot wait to celebrate you as I often say, there are several other scholarships from around the world that you can check out as well and apply for. So you might just be in that beautiful situation where you get different offers from different universities, from even different countries, and then you choose the most interesting, the most rewarding offer. So get to work and I'll see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now and happy new year.